hello, it's Andrew here again, and this is episode 202. And today we're looking just at one verse. It's Matthew chapter 27, verse 32. Now this is uh, after Jesus has been um, flogged by uh, Pilate's minions, and after he's been uh, humiliated and abused by them. And so we pick it up in verse 32. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. As I said, just one verse. This man from Cyrene is named. Now, I think that's really of interest. He's actually named. Often there are random people in Scripture who are never named, but he is named Simon. And I want to suggest that that's telling us something. He's named because he matters to the ongoing narrative in some way. People who read the story in the early days would know of him and his family. Mark's Gospel tells us that he was the father of Alexander and Rufus. Why would these details be included if they didn't have any significance to the early readers of the Gospel? My suggestion is that Alexander and Rufus were actually likely to be early disciples, known within the Christian community as followers of the way of Jesus. And it's likely that they may well have entered the story through this event, their father being conscripted to carry the crossbeam of Jesus' cross. Why Simon? The answer is likely that it's because he was clearly a foreigner. He had nobody to complain to. We're familiar with Jesus, um, the story of Jesus talking about Roman soldiers, that when they ask you to walk a mile carrying their kit, that you offer to carry them another mile. You see, the Roman soldier could legally do that. He could ask anybody. It didn't matter what their agenda is. It didn't matter which way they were going. He could ask them to carry their gear for a mile. Just a mile. No more. Just a mile. And I wonder if this was something totally outside what was legally allowed. Was it legally allowed to conscript a civilian to do this dirty work in a moral sense and heavy work of carrying the crossbeam up the hill to the site of execution of somebody who was regarded as a criminal. As I said, this Simon of Cyrene likely had no one to appeal to, no one that would listen or care if he wanted to complain about the way he'd been treated. The question is, though, how is he identified as a foreigner? I want to suggest two options. His clothing may have given him away. My hunch, though, is that it was the colour of his skin, maybe more likely. While there was a large community of Jewish refugees living in um, Cyrene, the kind of diaspora, Simon may not have been one of them. He may have been native to Cyrene, and he could have been quite black. The 1965 movie, The Greatest Story Ever Told, has Sidney Poitier cast as Simon of Cyrene. And if you know Sidney Poitier, he's black. Actually, he's still alive at 93, which is quite remarkable. Uh, but this would make sense. He would stand out. And let's not imagine that racism is a modern phenomenon. It isn't. It has a history as old as the world itself. Simon then would clearly not be seen as a native-born Jew, and he would likely be a good, good candidate. As I said, he had nobody to complain to. What this single sentence is telling us is that sometimes bad things can lead to good things. Simon has a place in the history books. While we're not told if he became a follower of Jesus, the clear inference 
is that his sons did and quite likely that he did as well he's Simon so here's Simon from Cyrene carrying the cross of this badly beaten up Jew I wonder what Simon's thinking is he resentful is he imagining where he'd rather be or should be his plans for the day have all been thrown out is he re grinding his teeth reflecting on the unfairness of it all just because he's black or does he notice or come to notice Jesus is Jesus straggling behind or is he carrying both Jesus and the crossbar helping Jesus to carry his cross I can kind of picture Jesus's arm kind of draped over Simon's shoulders as Simon carries him and together bearing the load of this crossbeam. Is there something in the intimacy of this awful encounter that touches Simon? Is this a thin place? One where he mysteriously encounters the divine, aware at some deep level in his soul that there is more going on here than appears on the surface of events as they are unfolding. Or is it later that he encounters the risen Christ and discovers the one he helped is actually helping him? It's not unreasonable to suggest that this encounter set Simon and his whole family line down through the generations on a new course, a life-changing, life-giving course, a whole new trajectory leading in a whole new direction. And simply because he's a stranger, the one selected at random to be the bearer of Christ's cross. I've long believed that there are no coincidences. You'll have heard me say this before if you've been tuning into these episodes. I'm not fatalistic, suggesting that the future is fixed and that what happens is meant to happen. I do believe in providence, however. And a providence there is something invitational. Simon is being invited into a relationship with Jesus, even as he's carrying the cross. None of this happens by accident. He gets to choose how he responds, with compassion or resentment. It's true for each of us, often many times a day at any one encounter, at any one moment. God is inviting us, you, me, to make a choice. A choice leading to darkness or to light, to despair or to hope, to death or to life. This may sound overblown, but there's a sense that we are the sum of our choices. Every day we're being invited into the light, into hope and joy, into life. And we get to choose how we respond. While Simon may have had no choice as to whether or not he carried Jesus' cross, he did get to choose how he carried it. He did get to choose the spirit in which he carried it. And that choice affected everything that came next. God bless you.